People say that Football Manager can be a really difficult game, but I've decided to take that to the next level. Welcome to the No Attribute Challenge. Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes, back at you once again with another video. And yep guys, we've got a brand new save, brand new series starting today. We're going to be managing Watford FC and we're going to be managing them as a part of a no attribute challenge. And what is a no attribute challenge, I hear you say. Let me show you. A no attribute challenge is pretty much what it says on the tin. Let's just have a look at Ken Seema. Never heard of him personally, so that's why I've chosen him to show you what the player profiles all look like. Here. And so as you can see, no attributes, no numbers for anything there. And the panel that I've added in, it adds in this little bit here. So this is mainly what I'll be going off for my team performances through the season. So as you can see, it's got all the stats. And yep, I can still see what positions the player's playing pretty much needed. I think you would agree. But as well as not being able to see any player's attributes, if we go to my profile, you can see not only have I got a very jazzy outfit on, a very, very yellow outfit, does not look like a gone off banana at all, does it? But you can also see no numbers on any staff members as well. It's like just to show you that as well. Let's just go assistant manager. Yep, see, nothing there. So basically, for team selection, it's going to be just who's played well in friendlies, who's played well in the recent games. And for buying players, it's going to be very, very much reliant on like scout reports. Like, here's the first scout report Callum Hudson Adoy. And let's have a look at his profile. As you can see, absolutely nothing there, apart from his height and how much he weighs. But yep, so scout reports are going to be very, very important in this save. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and play the transfer window off camera. And then I'll come back to you boys for the first game of the Premier League season, which is at home to Brighton. So that should be a very winnable game. So I'll see you in what will for you be one second. Alright guys, we're back. It's game day for the first game of the season. And we're at home to Brighton. So it should be a fairly winnable game, you would think. And yet if we just have a look at the results in the friendlies, we've done very, very well. We've lost to AFC Wimbledon in the FM Cup. But that was before I took over. And yep, we've won all the other games. Kapati, we beat them 3 0. Let's have a quick look at who scored the goals there Andre Gray, Ken Seema, and Penarada with all three goals there. Then we had an under a game against the under 18s, and 4 1 win that. Dini, Caviselli, Britos, and Gray with the goals there. And then Servet, we beat them 3 1. And again, Pep Perea with a goal and Dini with another couple. And then against Zenit, which is probably the best result we've had all summer. Dini with a hat-trick and Jose Holibas with the fourth goal. So very happy with how that one went in front of a very large crowd. 11,000 for a friendly. I will take that all day long. And then against Tor, who I believe are a French team. Uh, Penrada with the first goal and Dini again. So if we just have a look at Troy Dini, how many goals has he got in pre-season? Look at that. If that's not a man on fire, I don't know what is. Ten goals, three man of the matches from six starts and one sub-appearance. Hopefully he can carry that on to the season proper. And so if we just have a look at the transfers that we've brought in as well we'll just do it from the ones that i've brought in so first in through the door 
was Mohamed El Nenny on a loan from Arsenal. And obviously, as you can see, still no attributes. And so I looked at him on the scout report. Wouldn't normally have brought him in because if I remember rightly, his attributes don't look that good in FM. But as soon as I'm judging it by the scout reports now, he says here he's naturally fit. He's a current international, obviously, and he's brave and he's got a decent work rate. So that's the main reason why I've brought him in. Because I'm going to be playing him as either a Mazzala or a central midfielder. Both of which he can play fairly well. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. Yes, it says here he's fifth choice in the squad. But it's going to be a long season. There's going to be a lot of rotation. So, I would expect to see him get into the team quite a bit. And then following him in was a guy who I've never heard of. Let me know down below if you have. It's Antonin Barak from Udinese. He is a 23-year-old, again, another central midfielder, but can play attacking midfield as well. He's only had the one game in pre-season, one sub-appearance, so I can't really judge him too much on that. But his scout report says he's really good in the air. He's got decent balance, he's natural in a couple of positions, and he's got potential to be a good Premier Division CM in the future. Only con is that he might not fit in too well with the rest of the squad. But we shall see what happens with that in the future. And his best roles are box to box and a Mazzala. So perfect for what I'm going to be wanting. And then next up, we was really desperate for a left back. I looked at the team report screen and the left back was just screaming at me. Get us a new left back. Get us a new left back. He only joined us. What was it? A few days ago? Yes, yeah, so third of the eighth. So he's been here about a week. So he's not had any game time for us. And his scout report says that he's a good player for most Premier Division teams. Very nice to see. He's got very good pace, apparently, and good overall top speed. As far as his cons... Poor heading ability and fairly poor in the air. Why they feel the need to say them two differently, don't ask me. And then Williams, again, tends to be a, tends to be a peripheral figure in the squad. And last but not least is, again, another one who I've not heard too much of, Gotoku Sakai. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's a right back. Again, right back we needed a little bit of improvement in. Still hasn't played for us because he's only just joined us recently. Professional individual, natural in several positions, naturally fit. Decent player for most Premier Division teams. But it does say here how he's at least as good as Kiko Firmino. So I think Gotoku is going to be my first choice. Uh, no outs as far as anything major. Mikel Britos has gone out on loan. Not really too much to say about that. And so this is going to be the team for the first game of the season. It's going to be Ben Foster in goal, Cabaselli, Mariapa and Cathcart as the back three. And then Williams and Sakai as the wing-backs. Chalaba in a anchorman role on defend. So he will help out with the back three. So at times it might become a back five or even a back six possibly. We'll see what happens. And yep, in the central midfield, Will Hughes and Barrack are in there. Hughes as a Mizala, Barrack as a box to box. And then up top is Penarada and Troy Deeney. So let's go and crack on with the game. We are the favourites. And also, I've got to give a big massive shout out to FM Gins for the kits he's made for us. I quite like them. Here are the kits that he has made. Home kit there and the away kit. I like both of them. I'll drop his Twitter and his Twitch in the comments below. So you can go and ask him to do you any kits if you would like that. And now with all that waffling done, let's go and crack on with this first game. So here we are. First game of the season. Brighton are playing with a 4-4-1-1. Little bit defensive, as I suppose you might expect. Brighton still not a stabilised Premier League team. So hopefully we should be able to exploit them and get a comfortable win. I'm going to give an early prediction of 2-0. I think we're going to win this fairly comfortably. 
And I think Troy Deeney is going to get both of the goals. So let's go in that team talk. And let's go kick off the game. There we go. Both teams just lining up. And how are we going to start the game? Deeney with the ball. Back to Chalaba. Are we going to see a nice early highlight? Goes to Williams. And he's attacking early. He's gone for the cross. But Dunk clears that one away. And now first proper highlight of the game. is Brighton coming forward. Gross with the ball off the throw in. Goes to Stevens. Too proper. But Penrado nicks it back off him. But his long ball only goes to Duffy. And we are unable to win it back. And now it's the man with an unpronounceable name. Jahakabadas. With the ball. Probably just murdered that. Sorry if I have. Proper. Too gross. Too Stevens. And is he going to play it forward? Yep. Goes to Anthony Knockhart. And we win it back there. Nicely done. Williams. Can he play it forward quick? He does. And that's a very long ball. Is Deeney going to be able to keep this in? Just about. He crosses it first time though. And nobody's there. But it goes to Barak on his debut. And the shot hits the bar. And comes back out. Eight and a half minutes in, it's Brighton with a corner. And it's them with the lead. Shane Duffy in oceans of space to give Brighton the lead here at Watford. Let's have another look at this on the replay. Knockout with it. And yeah, Duffy just made himself oceans of space. Nobody marking him. That is something we're going to have to look at in the future. 25 minutes in now. Williams with the court with a cross and Deeney's header just goes over the bar. Half an hour gone. Gross to Montoya. To Stevens. He plays it on to the other side of the pitch to Bong, who's in ocean to space, but Foster with the stop. And he parries it out for a corner ball. Knockout to take it. And he crosses it in. And Cathcart this time deals with it. And so that is half time, and that is a very disappointing first half. If we have a look at the match stats, we're level on shots, six apiece, but they've had three on target as opposed to us only having the one. Possession has been 50 50, so it's been a very even game, but the fact we're not in the lead is not to my liking. So I'm going to go and tell the lads, show me something else in the second half. And I'm going to go a bit more attacking, I think. And what else can we change? I think we change the counter press and counter when we lose the ball. And distribute the ball to the target man. So we'll see what that does. And yep, let's get in to the second half. Alright guys, just over an hour gone. And we've already picked up an injury. Adalberto Penarada has gone down with a knock. Let's have a look, see if it's going to tell us what he's got. Potential foot injury. Okay, so we've had to take him off for Andre Gray. And I'm thinking of going a bit more attacking with the wingers. Let's see if going like that can do anything for us. So let's get Perea. Is he best on the right or is he best on the left? He's better on the left. So have we got anybody else who can play on the right? Not particularly, so go back that way. And then Isaac Success is on the left. And let's put them as attack and see if that can help us get back into this game of football. Five minutes left to go and it's Brighton with a free kick. And Foster's just about scrambled that one away. But Brighton still have the ball. They've gone for a third effort now and we've survived. And now we're on the counter here. Chalabar, can he find a teammate? Come on, can he get us an equaliser here? Why is he not passing the ball? He's gone for it himself. Why is he going for it himself? Why did he do that when he's got four or five men all around him? As yet Brighton's free kick and nowhere near going in. A minute or so left of normal time. It's Brighton again on the attack. And now it's proper with the ball on the edge of the box. Goes to Stevens, And is he going to be able to pass it to a teammate? Or can we win it back please? That would be nice. Nope, we've gone out wide to Montoya, and he's crossed the ball in, and oh, it's 2-0. Oh, that's a terrible start to the game. Glenn Murray with his first of the season, obviously, to make it 2-0. And yeah, 
Our defending was all over the shop there. All that pre-season form is counted for absolutely zilch. And it looks like this is going to be an opening day defeat. And indeed it is. 2-0 loss. Let's just have a look at the match stats. At half-time, it was all fairly even, all fairly level. And we've ended up the game with 10 shots to their 16. Just the one on target to their 7. 7 off target to their 2. Uh, possession is fairly even. So, yeah, very disappointing result. Much, much work to do. So, let's go into the dressing room. And let's go assertive. I'm far from pleased with what I just saw from this team. And end the team talk. And then we'll figure out where we're going to come back. And that will be, let's say, five or six games. Let me play five or six games offline and then we'll come back. So, one, two, three, four, five. You know what? We'll come back for Tottenham and Man United doubleheader. How does that sound? And so, guys, that's where we're going to leave it for today. If you've enjoyed the first video in this new series, please drop a massive thumbs up down below. Every like on a brand new series really does help the series out. So if you have enjoyed it, like I say, give it a big massive thumbs up. If you're new around here, subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager content. I've got a few ideas for new FM stuff to do and for Total Extreme Wrestling as well which is going to be coming back to the channel sometime soon. And follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash badjokesgames. And follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash badjokesgaming. All my links will be down below, as well as FM Gingers for the kits. And so, guys, thank you for that. I shall see you next time. Adios.